Now, after more than five hours of proceedings in court and uh, the uh, presentation of the third witness from the petitioner's side, as well as the uh, postponement of his uh, cross-examination, well, judges of the Supreme Court have decided that uh, uh, arguments that were brought up against the witness statement presented by uh, the third witness of uh, uh, Mahama, out of the 23 or so of them that uh, the uh, second respondent Council was seeking to have uh, struck out five of those uh, paragraphs in uh, the 32 paragraph witness statement were struck out by the uh, court, uh, justices of the Supreme Court. Now, for some of uh, the stakeholders in this particular case, that is uh, the petitioners as well as the respondents, well, it bodes well for their case in court. Let's uh, now join my colleague uh, Sixtus Dongulu, who brings us a detailed report of everything that transpired in uh, the other uh, Supreme Court today. <laughs> The longest day yet in the ongoing election petition hearing, Friday's proceedings saw former President Mohammed's third witness statement subjected to a barrage of objections. You can swear to a 30, this two paragraph witness statement and say that you, 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 are, you, are, you are swearing to the truth of the first 16. It shows that there's a real problem. This is a trial. Normally, even when somebody is giving evidence from abroad, you have an officer present whilst he's giving evidence. I think this is a very fundamental issue I'm raising. Mr. Mm Kotanko, -hmm. why didn't you come with the other counsel into chambers to tell us this this morning? My, my Lord, because we are told that this matter will be this uh, that the case is now to be in public. That is why. Otherwise, I would have done that. Consequently, President of the Court, Chief Justice Senin Yaboa, dispatched judicial officers to the undisclosed location of the witness. It, it, it should take perhaps not more than 25 minutes to have a judicial officer present at the location. Uh, 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 please, we will adjourn for 30 minutes and consider this. No, you will send somebody. Yes. Um, okay. Yes, we, we, will, we will arrange with you to the registrar. Yeah, okay. But lead counsel for President Akufuado Akutampao was not done. He invited the court to strike out 23 of the 32 paragraphs of the witness, arguing that the said paragraphs were material facts of the case which had not been pleaded in the originating processes. Yes, my lords, we will pray to have certain paragraphs in the witness statement struck out on the grounds that they are not supported by the pleadings. Also, on the further ground, my lords, all the paragraphs of the witness statement that we are taking objection to, in our view, relate to material facts, and there ought to have been a pleading of those facts in the petition, then it will give the opportunity for them to elaborate those facts in their witness, uh, uh, witness statement. Uh, for lead counsel for the Electoral Commission, Justin Amenuvo, the objections raised had merit to them. My lords, the object of pleadings is to compel the parties to define the issues upon which the case is to be contested and to prevent one party taking the other by surprise by leading evidence of material facts of which the other had no due warning. The penalty for failing to plead a material fact is the expulsion 
exclusion upon objection being taken of evidence to establish it where evidence which could have been ruled out as inadmissible because it is adduced to prove a material fact which was not pleaded has nevertheless been adduced without objection and is before the judge you know, goes on and says the trial judge was bound to take into consideration and the appellant ought not having raised his objection. So my lords, it is our submission that the, at this key moment, the objection is tenuously read and it should be considered. Lead counsel for former president Mahama, Chachu Chikata, would not hear these objections. He argued that the paragraphs were direct responses to portions of statements already filed by the respondents and in some cases responses based on the cross-examination of some of the previous witnesses. In paragraph 19 is a very direct statement that the first respondent and its chairperson Mrs. Jean Adukramenta are required in the conduct of their responsibilities in respect of elections to comply with the constitution. Then, 20, in declaring second respondent as the winner of the 2020 presidential elections on 9, on 9 December 2020, the chairperson of first respondent Mrs. Jean Adukramenta acted in flagrant violation of the 1992 constitution. 21, First respondent and its chairperson, Mrs. Jean Adukwemensa, in the conduct of their duties, are required by Articles 23 and 296 of the 1992 Constitution to act fairly, reasonably, candidly, and not arbitrarily or capriciously, and to comply with the requirements of law. Now, my lords, if the witness is therefore providing testimony that shows why there has not been compliance with legal requirements, if the witness is providing testimony in respect of that, that cannot be said not to be based on the pleadings. And the court ruled five out of the 23 objections upheld. We have considered the submissions of both counsel and the testimony and the pleadings in this petition. We are of the opinion that paragraphs 4, 5, 6, 7, and 18 ought to be struck out. And as they have no foundation in the pleadings or supported by the evidence, and the same is hereby struck out. Yes, the rest, that is the remaining paragraphs in the witness statement are maintained. The petition is hereby adjourned to Monday, the 8th of February 2021, for cross examination of PW3 at 9 30 a.m. So, in fact, apart from paragraphs 4, 5, 6, 7, and 18, the rest of the paragraphs remain. The cross examination of this third witness, Rojo Metalnunu, has however been adjourned to Monday. <laughs>
Matthew Nunu. And a witness statement prepared and signed by the said witness was filed before the court. And uh, we were expecting that he was uh, going to give his evidence today. The lawyers for the respondents, uh, particularly the lawyers for the second respondent, Nanado Dankwa Kufado, raised a number of objections to the paragraphs um, of the witness statement. In fact, they raised objections to 23 out of 32 paragraphs of the witness statement. And the basic objection they raised was that those paragraphs, in terms of the evidence that was sought to be given, did not arise out of the pleadings of the petitioner. But, and they, and they, they sought to say that those paragraphs should have been reflected in the pleadings of the petitioner. However, a basic rule of law, which I'm sure uh, was lost on them, is that in pleadings, you plead facts, but not evidence. And we had pled or pleaded the facts that were necessary to ground our petition. And this witness statement was designed to provide evidence in support of the facts that we have pleaded. So, for instance, we made it clear in the petition that the chairperson of the Electoral Commission had acted in an unfair, arbitrary, and capricious manner. And the evidence of Rojo Metrinunu, uh, together with the evidence of uh, Dr. Kwesa White, which I'm sure you, you I mean, uh, uh, witnessed the other day on the third, was meant to make it clear the extent to which the chairperson was capricious, was arbitrary, and also unfair as far as the petitioner's uh, case is concerned. And so we were taken aback when they sought to basically throw out the entire witness statement, um, saying that it was not supported by the pleadings. But as you have seen, uh, I'm sure the court took a different view. And out of the 23 paragraphs, in respect of who, which objection was taken, it was only five of them that uh, the, the court said should be struck out. And for us, um, that is a, a great victory. We will not comment on the substantive uh, content of the petition, I mean of the witness statement, because it's yet to be cross-examined on them. And I'm sure on Monday, when we return to court, uh, the cross-examination will take place. And thereafter, if there are any issues arising out of or in connection with the cross-examination, will address you and clarify uh, those issues to your understanding. The petitioner introduced a third witness, Mr. Rojo Metal Nunu, who was one of those two in the strong room, who is the one that we were all expecting would take the witness box initially. Um, and there were a number of paragraphs that he had outlined that he wanted to adduce before the court, some of which we objected to. In the end, the court upheld what we believe are some of the most substantial ones, paragraphs 4, 5, 6, 7, and 18. The court upheld those ones and struck it out. On Monday, we are coming in for cross-examination. Like they say, it's one thing putting something before the court. It's another thing defending it when it comes to cross-examination. And so, counsel on our side, and we believe counsel on the side of the first respondent, look forward to an opportunity on Monday to now put the paragraphs that have been admitted in Rojo's witness statement to the test under cross-examination. Essentially, that is what has happened today, as I'm sure you are uh, aware. We are happy that finally Rojo will be in the witness box so that some very important questions can be put to him and the bench or the court can take judicial notice of whether or not those answers to those questions and those arguments that are being preferred go in any way to help deal with the issues before the court. And as I wrap up, let me take you through the issue. Sometimes when you follow the long conversations, you forget what the court is trying to answer. The court is answering one question of law, three questions of fact, and one question of law that arises as a result of a fact. The question of law is whether or not the petitioner in his petition has any reasonable cause of action. The questions of fact are whether or not based on the data nobody got 50 percent whether or not 
the Article 63.3 threshold was met is a question of law, as I've mentioned earlier. But whether or not you include or exclude Techiman South, does it change? And then the other question of fact is whether or not all the so-called errors and vote padding affect the outcome of the presidential election results. The last question of law which comes from fact is whether or not the declaration will therefore be in violation of Article 63.3. If you find that at all material times, Nana Akufuado exceeded the 50% threshold, then that question of law will be answered in his favor, that then it was not um, unconstitutional. So we believe that we are making progress gradually. We are at a point where um, the third witness will be put in the box, and we'll see whether his argument stands up. What is interesting to note is that when our colleagues don't get a win in the wells of the uh, Supreme Court, when they come, they say their decisions don't make sense, that the court is not being fair to them, etc. Uh, but today, you notice that as they got some of their um, arguments upheld, they seem to think that the course is the best uh, uh, so far. But we'll have to see what um, is out ahead of us. They describe it as a great victory. <laughs> and let me explain to you why they describe it as a great victory. They describe it as a great victory because they realize that Dr. Petrahui's testimony fell flat, could not stand the test of time. And therefore, they've tried to bring in Rojo, who initially they came with some reasons not to bring, so that he can... And if you listen to the argument of counsel for plaintiff, uh, Mr. Chachuchi Kata, he makes the argument that during cross-examination, some very significant damage was made to the argument. And therefore, it is proper for them to bring in Rojo to try and re-establish some of those ones. So for them, if many of them had been struck out, it would be a very devastating day because... Then it goes to buttress the point that where Rojo failed, where, where Kwesa White failed, nobody can attempt to save him. Now, they seek to bring in Rojo to try and save Kwesa White where he fell flat. And we are pleased that at least they are no longer trying to poison the minds of the public against the court. We look forward to what uh, Monday will be.